Thank you for joining us for The Drive Back, the movie podcast where we imitate our favorite thing to do after a movie, which of course is to talk about it on the ride home. I'm Garrett, and as always, I'm joined by my good friend and co-host, Adrian. Hey, how's it going? And today, happy Halloween, although this episode is going to come out the day after Halloween, so hope you had a happy Halloween. (laughs) Um, This is going to be our Halloween spooktacular, I guess you could say, a special episode devoted to a Halloween movie, Um, but it's also going to be kind of like a first-timer's. So, what for is both a first time, yeah. Adrian? Uh, well, for those of you that don't know, Halloween happens on October 31st. Mm-hmm. Uh, and normally, like certain media outlets, they often do a Halloween special. Um, so, that's what we'll be doing today. Uh, and a first timer is an episode where both of us have not seen the movie, so we watch it for the first time. Yeah, and this one is a little special. We actually had a friend of the show, our uh, horror expert, Nadia, shout out. Um, who gave, chose a film for us. We told her we wanted a horror movie that neither of us had seen, uh, maybe heard about, but never seen, and uh, gave us her recommendation for the show. So that's what we've got. And all of this and more coming up on The Drive Back. And we're back, and surprise, we're taking a look at the cult classic 1988 film, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yes. This is a film I have heard about for so long. What about you? I had never heard about this film. Really? Uh, This was a first-timer for my ears as well as my eyes. I had never heard of it, and I had never seen it, and I watched it. (laughs) As did I. But before we get into our general thoughts, let's go ahead and talk about the film. Killer Clowns from Outer Space was released in 1988 and is directed by Steven Chiodo and stars Grant Kramer, Suzanne Snyder, and John Allen Nelson. Aliens who look like clowns come from outer space and terrorize a small town. It's the easiest plot summary I've ever had to read. That out of the way, general thoughts for Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Um, it is probably the most A, B movie I think I've ever seen. Um, I think this is a B movie through and through, but it's done so well that, it, and it does that whole self campiness so well. Um, I think it knows what it is. I think it know what people are, it knows what people are watching it for. Uh, and I think it does a pretty good job of hitting all those points. I think it, it. For what it is, I think it's a pretty fun movie. That is exactly my thoughts. I had so much more fun with this movie. Like, I I have seen, like, you know, videos talking about Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I've seen it brought up in, like, references on YouTube channels. I've, you know, I watched the walkthrough of the Halloween Horror Nights from two years ago here in Hollywood that did amaze for this movie. Um, so I've known about it for a very long time, and it's it's always, it seems to be like a cult classic among horror fans. And this movie's a lot of fun. Like, th- this this harkens back to the kind of movies that we don't get anymore. No. like And the, can't get. No way. Yeah, like, campy horror... I, w- I would say this is a horror comedy. If anything. I wouldn't say it's... It's more of a comedy than a horror movie, I would say. But it doesn't have, like, slapstick comedy. I want to be clear on that. Like, it definitely doesn't have, like, just outright jokes. It's just kind of funny. Yeah. Like, the whole scenario is just kind of funny. The fact that this song has, or the, it's not the song, this movie has a theme song is great. The, the intro song absolutely shreds <laughs> when, this song, so when this song opens up. And then every time the clown's theme would play, I legitimately thought they was going to play the Rocky theme. Because it sounds similar for oh, a split second. Oh, I haven't like heard the Rocky theme in a long time, but dang, yeah. Dang, dang, but it didn't, or it didn't do that. It just was like... I don't know. It was so much fun. Um, But let's go ahead and uh, drop a spoiler warning for Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Uh, If you do want to watch the film, it is available to rent only, unfortunately, or fortunately, if you don't mind supporting the movie. Support this movie. This movie's a lot of fun. Whether or not it's good, doesn't matter. It's a fun movie for the Halloween season. Um, But let's go ahead and dive into it. So, this is kind of a hard movie to talk about acting, writing, and you know directing and all that but what are some of the highlights for you from 
Killer Clowns Crowder Space? Maybe some of your favorite moments or sure. what stuck out. I, I think the design, just the aesthetic of the whole film, I think they nailed. I think you could have swung either way with either a more serious tone or a more campy tone, and it would have ruined it, to be honest. Um, I think it threads a very thin line uh, very well. I think it does great with that. And I also think the sound design for the clowns was really, really engaging to me. There's a couple different scenes where different clowns do like a laugh. And it's very each one is very unique. Um, but like, I don't know if there's like reverb on the voice, but it's like all modified and kind of creepy. Kind of like, oh, that's kind of fun. Like just really well done. Um, acting, I just have to write off as an F all the way around. I don't think anybody did a good job in this movie. Um, except the, maybe the clowns. But even then, maybe they get like a, maybe they get like a D. Um, I don't know. I thought but... it was pretty Oscar worthy when one clown goes up to the front of a drugstore and sees that robotic gorilla, and he's like, "Oh, that's a good idea," and then just sits there doing the motions. <laughs> or how about when a uh, one does hand signal uh, hand, hand shadows? Yeah, when he only has like four fingers, but there's like intricate lizards <laughs> on the wall. <laughs> Like the dancing, he does like the the crossing of uh, with George Washington in the boat, and just from like <laughs> these giant fingers. <laughs> and then somehow, right? Uh, I would actually argue that that scene was probably one of the craziest in my head, because every other murder had been relatively physical. Like yeah. they died with some, and this one, a shadow just disappeared. People. Well, the, it actually it shrinks them down because you can hear them in his hand, oh. and then he puts it into the bag with the the popcorn larva or whatever they are. Well, I didn't realize that it shrunk them. I might have like literally looked away for a second, but I will say that <laughs> that still doesn't make any sense. No, compared, it's great. compared to how everyone else dies in the movie. Um, what, what, but I do want to talk about one big highlight. Yeah. My favorite scene in the whole movie because it actually borderlined on actual horror. Uh, which was the puppeteering scene with the detective. Oh, yeah. Um, the makeup and stuff, I, I'll, I'll forgive all that. The, I mean, the setting is, a, like, it's obviously it's a B-movie. But the concept of that scene itself was horrifying. Yeah. And, when like, seeing him, like, out. yeah, I was just, when he pulls the hand <laughs> out, and it's like, oh. Uh. <laughs> like, I kind of forgot that I was watching, like, I'm going to call it, like, a dumb, scary movie. Yeah. I kind of forgot that I was watching it, a, a dumb, scary movie, and then I was like, that was pretty wild for this film to do. Like, it's yeah. pretty scary. I mean, because there's not a lot of blood in the movie. I mean, like, which is... It's all nice. cotton candy. It's all cotton candy, or, or syrup, I guess you could call it at some point. Um, you know, they're basically... And, and, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll get into this in a second. But, like... The, just the like you had mentioned it, but they borderline between serious and campy, and they stride that fine line. Like yeah. kill, killer clowns, you could have done something way scarier. You could have done something yeah. way more funny. But yeah. the fact that they go all in, like the fact that these clowns, when they're babies, are popcorn, is hilarious. The fact that they don't oh. kill people, they turn them into cotton candy balls so they can suck them for like food or whatever. That's what is, she said. Is great. That, there you go. <laughs> um, but like, it's just, and, and it's like a carnival ship. Even the line from one of the two brothers that has the ice cream truck where he's like, maybe they came here thousands of years ago and that's where our perception of clowns comes from. <laughs> our perception of clowns. Yeah. It's so stupid. And then also when they get to reprise their arc by pretending to be the master clown mm -hmm. when they crash in. But I did want to talk about one scene that I thought was absolutely ridiculous, which was the shower scene. With I don't remember any of the characters' names. No, yeah. But when she goes to get into the shower and like she's taking and this is like it's like PG thirteen, like there's no nudity or anything. Mm -hmm. But she's taking off her clothes and like there's just a insane amount of popcorn on her clothes. Yeah. Like how did she like she doesn't notice it, but it's literally <laughs> falling all over the floor. And then she throws her clothes in the hamper. And then, I'm not going to exaggerate here, I think she takes what in movie time is like a three-hour shower. Because So then the movie jumps, and we watch like seven different scenes happen. And then we come back, and she's just getting out of the shower. I thought that was insane, timing-wise. But then the little baby clowns that come out of the hamper were some of the most horrifying practical <laughs> effects I think I've ever seen. Someone was watching The Thing, and they're like, yeah, 
<laughs> Let me melt that down with crayons and make it, and then uh, yeah, and then make it into a clown. It. I but, also thought it was great when she's when she actually first takes her clothes off and gets into the shower. When you see, when it pans down to the the ground and you actually uh, see the popcorn like inching itself. Inching, yeah. Oh, it's so like the practical effects are really good here. Like it's and kind he, of I, I can imagine that those were just like fishing wire tied around popcorn. Oh yeah. That they just, like, yank off to the side, but it worked really well. Like, again, the campiness of the film worked in its favor because... Oh, yeah. You can clearly see how some of the effects were done, but it almost just adds to it. Like, you forget about it. And I think that's hard to, to, to meet that kind of middle point where people are accepting of the faults of the movie to a point where they love it. And it becomes this kind of cult classic horror film like this one clearly did. Yeah, it's one of those films, it's like, it's among the type of film we don't get anymore, right? We we don't get creature features anymore, we don't get campy horror movies, because people want things with more substance and more violence yeah. and kind of more, that's just kind of the zeitgeist right now. But like, um, you know, I think that's what makes this film so, like, it. it's not particularly good. It, it's not a good film. Yeah. And, but like... But it works because it knows what it is, and it's far newer than you'd expect. This feels like something they would have made during like the fifties or sixties. It's eighty eighty eight. Eighty eight, yeah. So like it's far later. And I think that if they were going all in on making it like a, a celebration of campy films, they could have hired bigger actors and like had them go all in on the campiness. But by keeping it with relatively unknown actors of seats, as far as I'm concerned, I've never heard of a lot of these actors before. Um, they may be big in the horror secret scene, but I don't know. Um, but like the fact they keep it almost indie makes it kind of feel like you're, they're trying to take it seriously, but then the campiness is also what makes it work. Yeah, I think they clearly could have gone for like an it esque like yeah. target. They could have easily been like, we're gonna be like super dark and grimy, and they didn't. And I think by keeping it light and and knowing that you're not really gonna scare anyone. Yeah. Um, I think allowed them to make a movie that went down in history. You're not going to scare anyone unless you're afraid of clowns. You will not like this movie if you're afraid of clowns. Yeah, if you have one of those real fears of them, if you're like a joker about it, you'll be fine. Yeah. But if you have a real fear of clowns, this will be scary. This will not help you. <laughs> I also really... There's a scene in the beginning with like the old farmer <laughs> and his dog, I think Shiloh, yeah. or like Sinaloa or something. something. Um... But they're walking, and there's clearly a different shadow on the the face of the tent. But I, uh, and that's fine. I just love that the shadow was in like 4K, <laughs> and the rest of the shot was in like, like 720. 720 or something. Yeah, like everything else is so blurry except this one shadow. You could tell they were like, "Oh, let's upscale it," that's and it's so crisp on this one shadow. I was like, "Oh, that's just altered in there." But yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a fun movie. I don't. I actually don't really have much to critique, critique. about it yeah. because I think based off what like I've said and based off of what you'll see if you look up even the poster, you'll understand what this movie's trying to do. Yeah. And if you'll either want to watch it or you won't. And I think this is a great movie to watch with like if your friends are looking for something kind of unique and it's a Friday night and you're like, hey, I heard about this movie and I think it could be pretty fun to laugh at and watch along and maybe have a little bit of creepiness. Yeah. It's a good one. This party's dying. Let's throw on killer clowns. You know? This is a great Halloween, like holiday party oh, yeah. movie. If you're thinking about watching one before it's, Halloween, it's one of those good ones to have on in the background. Just like have it playing during like a Halloween party or something. Yeah. You know, it's just, this movie. Or so if fun. you have a clown mask, this is a great one to play. With your friends over, and then knowing you have a clown mask, and then go. It's a long-term joke, but it could be great. Oh, it could be fantastic. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, like, you, you could go into the critiques of this movie. You could go into shot composition. You could go into editing problems. But none of that's good. <laughs> exactly. But, like, it's not supposed to be in this film. It knows what it is trying to be. Yeah. And the only thing I can really critique is that later in the film, as they're running through the clown's ship, you can yeah. clearly tell it's the same sound stage that they keep using because it's all spread out, different things placed here and there. You can tell it's just a sound stage they rented and yeah. kept putting new things in. That, but that like, that's the only thing I could I could really seriously critique. 
but the, the, yeah that i guess because they they probably didn't intend that right i think everything yeah. else is pretty much intentional to an extent um but, I can but guarantee yeah I, the, the budget for this film went into the clowns and the practical effects because they look incredible yeah yeah no i i completely agree and i also think that whole final scene where the ship like literally is a spinning top in the air mm-hmm. and then it blows up and then you're like oh that guy's dead he was literally and like then- a foot from that clown <laughs> And then he comes down in the car, and it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, and then and then the two brothers get out too, and they're like, you literally died. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's just playing. And then whatever that, I feel. whatever that like love triangle thing that was going on oh is just God, like yeah. resolved slash unresolved at the end with like a hand gesture. We need to find out if that is going to be the first like, you know, major total bisexual love triangle in a horror <laughs> film like the, at the in end history? The, you know i think it's mike and mike i don't remember the name which mike tobacco is the main character's name i just remembered and that is tobacco just is fantastic <laughs> but there's the cop i don't remember the cop's name but like they start getting real buddy buddy towards the end so it's like mm, there might be something there there was some weird innuendo between characters. Some weird tension at times. Oh, and can we uh, talk about the weird clown girls that, like... Oh, with the ever-inflating with, breasts? With the two <laughs> with the two brothers that fall into the ball pit. And you're Who like, knows okay, how they resolve that scenario? They're dead. And then they come back with, like, kiss marks all over them? What happened? Killer clowns. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I, I got really nothing else to say. I think this movie is just I, so much fun. Yeah, I completely agree. I do know that there was supposed to be a second one. I I did read that, um, and it just never happened. And I just want to clarify for anybody that might be thinking that because we're recording this, we deserve a second one. Don't make another one. I think this is a standalone film that should live on its own. No one is asking for Killer Clowns from Outer Space 2. People love the first one. That doesn't mean we want a second one with modern day horror. It won't be good. You cannot do what this movie does anymore. Um, So do not make another one, please. But this is a great movie, and I loved watching it. Okay. Yeah, it's it's great. Um, I really don't have any critique. Like, it's just so much fun. Yeah. Like, it's just a fun time. Like, I was expecting just, like, all right, let's get this over with. It might be funny, whatever. And then I just, like, after, like, the first... Like, there's so much more of the clowns than you'd expect to be in a horror movie like this. So like my, my vision is, was on the whole time. Oh, um, I really liked when they were all in the car and that security guard was like, Hey, stop. And then they do the whole clown car trick or like <laughs> 30, get out of the car. <laughs> and then the, my favorite line from this movie, what are you going to do with those pies boys? Yeah. <laughs> and then they straight up murder him with like acid pies. <laughs> it's like... great. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but like, more about what you were saying, though. I don't want this to be rebooted. I don't want a sequel. No. I don't want a Blumhouse trilogy that's darker. Like, just leave it, please. Yeah, just, like, this is one of those things you just leave alone because it belongs in a museum. <laughs> it belongs in a museum. All right. It belongs in a museum, boys, along with those pies. Along with those pies. Don't melt me again. <laughs> but uh, that's going to bring us to, uh, well, not an end. Let's go ahead and get those final thoughts and a score, Adrian. What did you? What's your final thoughts here for Killer Clowns? I think this movie's a killer, uh, one to keep in your back pocket for those movie nights when no one knows what to watch. Um, I think it's definitely one of those things that people will be like, "How have you seen this?" And you can like tell the whole like it's definitely just a conversational movie, mm-hmm. um, one that people can talk over because the dialogue does not matter no. uh, at all. Like I don't even remember. Besides, what are you gonna do with those pies, boys? <laughs> Um, yeah, I think it's a great movie. It's a back pocket film, one of those kind of deep catalogs if you're trying to have some of those um, deep cut horror movies there. So I think this is the one. Uh, nothing about it is good. I cannot tell you that anything is uh, besides like, it's one of those weird things. Nothing's good about the movie except the movie as a whole. Uh, and because of that, I gave this movie an 83. Wow. Um, okay. I think it's really fun. I think it's a great film. I think it's... I'm going to keep it in my back pocket forever as one of those movies I can throw on if people are like, I want like an old movie, uh, an old scary movie. Boom. Got it. So, I'm yeah, I liked it. Yeah. I, I th- honestly, I think it's one that I might actually buy 
because I think it'd be so much fun to like, you have all these movies on your shelf. Why do you have killer clowns? And I'd be like, <laughs> because it's a fun movie. Yeah. Um, but as far as final thoughts, I thought killer clowns from outer space is a super fun time. Obviously don't take it seriously at all. You will enjoy yeah. it far more. Um, and it's especially, it's a lot of fun because we don't get movies like this anymore. And I think it's a celebration. I, I treat it like a celebration of those kinds of movies. That being said, um, I actually ended up giving it a 75. I thought like, oh, nice. which is interesting because recent horror movies that I've reviewed, I've given right around the 70 range, um, mostly being the newer, the newer Halloween films and the original Halloween. Um, but this, these were, this was just so much fun. It was such a blast to watch too. And actually very refreshing. Me, oh, incredibly like compared to like a lot of the serious films we've been watching. Yeah. Um, this is that's definitely a refresher. A refresher. Um, we'll see about next week. Cause that's going to be an interesting one. Um, but actually, now that I'm thinking about it, because we've been talking about the, the channel and other kinds of content we can make for, you know, this growing little bubble of ours, um, sure. I think it would be super fun. And please let us know on Instagram, comment below what you would like us to do regarding this. I think it'd be fun to record a Mystery Science Theater riff track style audio commentary from us while we watch this movie just making fun of it the entire time this movie okay i think it'd be so much fun just to like make fun of it as we go along but also just love on it because it's great um let us know if you'd be interested in that um but that is going to bring us to an end adrian if any of these uh ghouls and goblins out here would like to uh follow us online where can they do that the Drive Back Podcast. You can find us pretty much everywhere at that uh, title right there. If you're here on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe and hit the little bell uh, and smash the like button. The little bell will make sure you get notified every Monday when we release new episodes. Uh, if not, you can listen to us every Monday on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, wherever it pleases you at uh, The Drive Back Podcast. Make sure to follow us on those apps. And then if you want to actually talk to us, uh, our main platform is here on YouTube as well as Instagram at The Drive Back Podcast. You guessed it. Uh, so go ahead and comment there. We post whenever we have new episodes coming out, and we also talk to people. Uh, they like to throw some some comments on those posts and let us know if they liked the movie or didn't like the movie, or if they just liked that we're even doing the movie. So go ahead and uh, talk to us over there. Or if they just, you know, hate what we have to say about something. Yeah. So. <laughs> but anyhow, um, thank you so much for watching, thanks so much for listening. Next week we are going to have a show-and-tell um, I have not seen Inside Out, so Adrian has selected Inside Out, the Pixar movie, for me to watch, which you can find yes. on Disney+. Plus. Um, and then uh, Planet of the Apes, the Tim Burton one, uh, is the one that I have selected for Adrian to watch. Um, I'm really, really anxious to talk about that one because it is there's a lot that I feel like we're going to have a good time talking about for that one. Um, awesome. Which is actually, it's the only movie we've watched so far that I have actually already reviewed on my own blog which is linked down below. Oh, okay, um, nice. So you can actually see my score if you want to ahead of time. It's not changing. <laughs> um, I'll just be able to expand upon it even more. Sure. Um, but that one, I believe, is available to rent or to watch on Amazon Prime. If yes. not, then you will have to rent it. Um, but other than that, we're pretty much all set. Take a look. Um, we've got some big... We had, um, we had Dune come out. We both went and saw Dune. Um, I think we might try and do a recording of a, a review on yeah. that coming up. Why not? Because I know... Since it was greenlit a sequel, my score actually in, improved. So um, I'm actually looking forward to talking about that. But I will be going to see uh, the French Dispatch tonight. So look forward to a review for that on my uh, blog, as well as uh, Last Night in Soho uh, is coming out this weekend. So we'll should be getting a review for that. Maybe Antlers. We'll see. We'll see if I end up going to see that. I don't know. We'll we'll play it loose. Um, but other than that, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you guys next week. We love you so much as always. And we'll see you next time on The Drive Back. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Drive Back. Make sure to be on the lookout for new episodes every Monday. And make sure to follow us on social media.